how bad is this semiconductor shortage? Clearly, it's going to hit every part of the uh, auto industry. Um, but do you not have optimism it gets dealt with quickly? Um, yes, I mean, and you mentioned it. It's an industry problem, and it's not just in the automotive industry. You see it in consumer electronics um, all over the place. Um, industry, which was even increasing last year in demand, in particular in the second quarter with all the lockdowns which happened in home office supplies, that's where the automotive industry was in a standstill. And that's where, since then, the automotive industry is in a catch-up mode. That's why we have started this year with a, a subdued um, speed, which is mainly driven by semiconductor shortage, um, but as well by the farther effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so we expect for this year still a market uptick of 9 to 12 percent during the course of the year. However, we expect as well that the shortage of semiconductors, as well as other raw materials, by the way, will still take and lag through the full year. Are you, I mean, you talked earlier about um, costs, about 200 million euros for logistics. Is there a risk that um, those costs increase due to this uh, current industry-wide problem? I mean, the 200 million um, additional supply chain costs which we announced today are due to this um, raw material shortage which we experience right now and by the waste majority coming from semiconductor shortage. This is as good as we can anticipate and forecast right now. So it is a substantial impact. However, it's our best guess going through into the year. And as said before, we still expect this shortage to prevail during the course of the rest of the year. Nikolai, good morning from London. If you're not supplying car parts or parts in time because of some of these chip shortages, do you think you'll get sued? And how much of a risk is that? I mean, the full effort of us together with our suppliers and our customers is clearly to keep the supply chain running and making sure that the effects coming from coronavirus park leading into the shortage will be mitigated as much as we can. So this is our clear effort together with our customers and suppliers 24 seven. We are working as a team in order to keep it running. And this is our key first priority during the course of the year. Obviously, your margin estimates for this year are well short of your midterm target. What concrete steps do you need to take in order to improve progress toward that goal? I mean, we already mentioned at our Capital Markets Day last year that our targets, which we set, are midterm targets. Midterm targets means in a range of three to five years to be achieved. So 2021 is still a transition year, as said at the beginning, with the semiconductor shortage, um, it, it has a subdued start. However, with the growth of the industry, with the growth of our portfolio, the outperformance of the market, which we still expect this year as well on the automotive as well as on the rubber side, and with our cost program, which we have started and which we are continuously doing, we still expect to reach our midterm goals and we still fully stick to those targets. Nikolai, we talk a lot about cars with you, obviously, because it's the big part of uh, the lion's share of your revenue. I'm a big motorcycle fan, and you make the TKC80, which is an iconic enduro tire. I use the road attacks on my Multistrada. What does that market look like to you this year? Um, do you see a pickup? Because it seemed to me at the beginning of this COVID pandemic, the best way to social distance would be to jump on my motorcycle and ride, and I've been doing that a lot. I cannot more and agree, and congratulations, you have the best tires in our portfolio, and obviously you enjoy to ride them. But I agree, Father, we see that the trend to individual mobility has clearly increased during the pandemic. So I would assume personally that two wheelers, I mean, motorcycles as well as bicycles, this trend will continue and will further increase the market and further push for people to go out. And that's all what they want after being so much at home to go out in the nature and with a motorcycle experience speed. Uh, Nikolai, you know, Matt loves driving. I want to be in a car looking at inflation expectations or looking at forecasts. So I want autonomous <laughs> driving. How much of that will be part of your revenue? And actually, do you need to spin off to, to take fully, you know, to, for, to, for create value for shareholders? You need to spin that off. 
So automotive driving, assisted automotive driving is since long a strong part of our portfolio and in the meantime we have reached as well a strong position over there with more at a certain point of time of 2 billion business in this area. We announced today that we will further invest as this is part of our portfolio of growth. Why growth? Because there we see lots of innovation, new technologies coming up, markets positions of the future are still to be made up. And we still work hard in order to get a top position in this area. That's why we announced today that we will further invest 200 to 250 million euro into this area within this year in mm. order to strengthen organically, but as well buyer yeah. partners, why are startups getting attractive and trying to get this technology position together as fast as we can.